Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about fraps. What does fraps do? What is it good for? You'll find out soon. And you're going to find that out now, actually. So fraps is a very useful tool. I use it all the time for a number of different things. So I've actually had a lot of people ask me, what's that yellow number in the corner whenever you're running games? And that is fraps. So the, this yellow number right here, which you can relocate to whichever corner you want, is actually an overlay that shows you what FPS you're getting in any given game. So even games that, like maybe, maybe you're running a game that's not Steam, so you don't have NetGraph or whatever the case may be. Well, you can go ahead and you can use Fraps. It overlays on almost anything that runs off your graphics card. So that's really useful. Other things that it does include uh, managing and taking screenshots. So it can be used as a screenshot manager. Some games have screenshot managers built in, but not all of them do. And they all save to different places. And some of them are more or less configurable than others. So it's great for that. It's also really useful for benchmarking. I use Fraps for most of my game benchmarks. And what I do is I set it to stop the benchmark after a fixed amount of time. So that way I'm doing the same benchmark segment every time. And then I have it save the results in an Excel compatible format into a given folder. And then I can go through, I can see the minimum, maximum, and average FPS for a given game. And then I can report that data to you. So it's great for that. It's also useful for, and this is going to be the focus of our video, taking game video footage and then turning it into something that you can share with others, create montages, whatever the case may be. So we're going to show you sort of uh, the settings that are involved in creating videos with Fraps. And then we're going to kind of show you our ultimate configuration for capturing and creating Fraps videos that most people probably wouldn't use, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. So let's start with how most people are going to run Fraps before we get into our ultimate configuration. So here within the movies, uh, screen, we can see a few different options. So the first option we're going to go through is the video capture settings. So for most people, you're going to want to select a reasonable frame rate. Something like 30 FPS or 24 FPS will play back very well uh, and it will look fairly smooth in most settings. Uh, recording at half size is still going to look pretty decent as long as you're not running at a very, very low resolution. And that does give you uh, a lot less strain on your storage device that you're using to store these movies because these are, unless you have a CPU that's so fast you can encode real time on the fly, these are going to be fairly uncompressed movies and very large files. So you want to reduce the file size that you're writing as much as possible. Now the other settings we have here are whether you want to record sound or not, so we are going to be recording sound. You can also record an external input, so you could record your microphone at the same time as your sound, so you could hear voice chat as well. And finally, the ones down here, locking frame rate while, while recording. This works much the same way as VSync in that it will smooth things out and it will help your uh, slower machine perform better. And forcing lossless RGB capture, you want to turn that off um, <laughs> unless you have a very high spec machine. Now, even for these settings, you're going to want probably a quad-core processor, especially with modern games, and you're going to want a decent graphics card, and you're going to need a secondary storage device. So you can see with our machine here, we've actually got our system running off the SSD, which is down here, and then we are going to be recording to a couple of different secondary storage devices. So one of them is going to be, this is the new Seagate Barracuda with the one terabyte platters out of every hard drive on the market. Uh, as far as 7200 RPM drives goes, this is pretty much the cream of the crop because of its one terabyte platters in terms of sequential reads and writes. Now our other solution is two Patriot Pyro SEs. Now each one of these individual drives is capable of several hundred megabytes per second. We have configured these in RAID 0, so we are talking sequential write speeds of well over 500 megabytes per second for these drives. And I'm going to show you, even using external, non, like secondary recording devices, how much of a difference it can make in Fraps running our ultimate settings between using a hard drive and using two SSDs. Now, before we talk about our extreme settings, which are kind of what you've seen already, let's go through the test platform that we are using in order to achieve this. So we've got an Intel Core i7-2600K, 8 gigs of memory. We've got dual GTX 580s running in SLI. We have an SSD boot drive. We've also got our Seagate Barracuda drive, which we're using as a recording drive. And then we also have our dual Patriot Pyro SATA 3 SSDs 
as an alternate recording medium. So that should give you some idea of the kind of CPU and GPU horsepower that we're throwing at this problem. So obviously this is not an everyman configuration. We're gonna record at 60 FPS with lossless RGB capture. We're gonna be recording the sound. And right now, the folder I have set to save the movies in is folder F. Now F is my two terabyte drive. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into our game, alt enter. We are going to press F9, right? Yeah, F9. Okay, we're gonna press F9 to start recording. I want you guys to watch that frame rate right there. Doop, 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 doop. So we're gonna hang out and head north through the camp here, shoot some dudes. You can see there is some chop to this video. Can you see that in the camp? Probably, I would certainly assume so. There, you saw a bit of a hiccup there. Now, this drive is doing its best. However, these are some enormous, enormous data rates here. Bit rates, whatever you want to call them. This is huge files being written in a very, very short period of time. So we do have still fairly good performance in terms of the frame rate, but we do see some hitching. Now, I want to just go ahead and pause the game here and I'm going to open up the folder that we are recording these videos to. So here, we're at the F folder, and I wanna show you guys this. So this is right here. Oh, hold on, we're not done recording yet. Ha, press F9, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this video. This is a 13 second video clip that is 1.78 gigs. Simply astounding. So we were able to record that at about 45 FPS, but it wasn't consistent. It wasn't stable. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our destination to the D drive, which is our dual, here we go. This is our 424 gig dual SATA 3 SSD RAID 0 array. And we're gonna go back into our game and we are going to press F9 again and start recording. So remember, we've capped it at 60 FPS. And if we can keep the frame rate at 60 FPS while recording, that is going to be the best for playback later because it's going to be nice and smooth when you're trying to watch the video after the fact. So here we go, running around in the same level. 60 FPS, no big deal for the SSD. So recording Fraps videos obviously isn't the only situation in the world where having huge sequential writes compared to a mechanical drive is going to be beneficial, but it is definitely one of the ones where people who record a lot of Fraps videos are gonna get benefit out of it, just like we have. So guys, that pretty much wraps up our video about how to record Fraps. It really is as simple as buying and installing Fraps, setting up the directories that you want to use to record your images and your videos, configuring these settings to optimize them for your machine to deliver the best possible experience. And press enter to load the last save game. But one thing that I do wanna do before we totally wrap up here is I want to show you guys what we can do with sort of our ultimate SSD configuration here. So I've reconfigured Fraps to a limit of 200 FPS, which is essentially not even a limit at that point because I can't imagine too many uh, graphics cards that can run Crisis 2 at 200 FPS steady. So we're gonna press F9 and we're gonna see what we can get out of our dual SSD configuration. Remembering that this is recording the full 1080p resolution at whatever frame rate that it is recording it at constantly in a lossless format. So there we go, it looks like we can manage actually not that much more than 60 FPS, so about 70 to 75 FPS. Now I'm just going to go and see, hold on, we better record at least about 30 seconds of this so that it makes, uh, makes a clip. Fraps is kind of cool in that it splits the video clips into smaller file sizes as you go so that when you're trying to import them into a video program or whatever the case may be, you don't end up with after one game like a single 300 gigabyte file because that's, uh, no matter what kind of a storage solution you have, that's gonna be a bit of a bear to work with in your video editing program. So let's go ahead and stop this recording and open up our D drive, which is our SSD drive. Whoops, wrong one. And let's see what kind of a file size we got. So here for a 13 second clip, we got a 3.91 gig file. And for a 12 second clip, we got a 3.95 gig file. So it looks like perhaps is, because remember we're recording more frames per second. 
which is basically more 1080p size still images because that's how it's recording this. There's no compression, right? So uh, there you go. That is what our SSD array is capable of. Thank you for checking out this video on how to record videos in Fraps, how to use Fraps, and especially the benefits of a couple Pyro SE SSDs in RAID 0 in the context of opening or creating or working with very, very large files. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more computer videos from your favorite online e-tailer, NCIX.com.